Welcome to our launch edition of the Investors Board Performance Review. My name is TK Kerstetter and I'm the CEO of Boardroom Resources and the host of the sister show Inside America's Boardrooms. Um, the Investors Board Performance Review is going to be a new show where we invite institutional investors and advisors, some of the largest in the world, to come in and give their views about what boards are doing well, what boards need to improve on, and a quick look into the future. We're coming to you from the NASDAQ market site in Times Square, and I want to give a special thanks to some people that made this show possible, and that's NASDAQ, PwC's Governance Insight Center, Wilson, Sincini, Goodrich, and Rosati, and our friends at Equilar. So I think you're going to find this very interesting, and I'd like to introduce my Cracker Jack panel, if I could, that's going to help me launch that. And uh, these guys are all very qualified to be part of the launch show. So for, from my furthest right, let me start with Ken Birch, who's the Executive Director for the Council of Institutional Investors. To his left is Sean Quinn, who's the Head of U.S. Research for the Institutional Shareholder Services and is responsible for directing research, analysis, and voting recommendations for U.S. companies. And last but not least, uh, to my immediate right, is Mike Garland, who is the Assistant Controller for the Corporate Governance and Responsible Investment for the New York City Controller, Scott M. Stringer. The Controller's Office serves as the Investment Advisor, Custodian, and Trustee to the New York City Pension Funds. I would make the following assertions. One, I think that boards are, are in fact more independent and also act more independently than they used to. That's been a long-term progression. I think that's fairly uncontroversial assertion. Um, not to say that it's perfect, but I, I think there's been a significant change. I think uh, boards are more attuned to shareholders than they had been. Um, I, I would credit part of this to the whole say on pay vote, which uh, started a new kind of discussion between shareholders and boards. Part of it's the rise uh, of shareholder activism, uh, which has made these issues more important uh, to boards in a, in a different way than they had been. That is the, the issue of maintaining good knowledge and connection with, with institutional shareholders. So I think that's improved. Um, my sense is that boards are doing more that's better informed on strategy and capital allocation decisions. That's a little bit speculative on my part. I, I do think there's some evidence that M&A decisions, whether it's the boards or management, perhaps are a little better than they were in that uh, uh, for acquiring companies, uh, the acquisitions have been value accretive in recent years, which in the whole history, uh, acquisitions have tended to destroy value. Um, so something seems to have changed there, at least temporarily. Um, I think that boards are also doing better on uh, executive succession planning, although again, that's hard to judge. And I would put that at the top of the list as, as areas of, for improvement as well. I think directors do frequently because that's it's such a hard subject. Um, and this is maybe underreported, but I think that uh, oversight of financial reporting has in fact improved, which is an outcome of Sarbanes-Oxley, of the efforts of boards of directors and audit committees in particular. It's sort of fallen uh, out of attention uh, because people have gotten used to it. I think the Division of Corporation Finance at the SEC also has played a big role on that. So those, that's what I put out. Good. Sean? Boards are definitely doing a better job of engaging with their shareholders. They know their shareholders uh, and are engaging with them year-round. So I think they're able, to, uh, they're able to prevent many of the surprises, the surprise votes that would occur at annual meetings a decade ago. So uh, I think they're better. Um, I think they're certainly they're more receptive to shareholder views than they were uh, than they were a decade ago as well. Um, one other thing boards have gotten much better at is they're uh, they're a lot better at um, managing their own workloads. Uh, go back about about five or ten years, and it was fairly common for directors to serve on five, six, seven, eight, or even more boards. And uh, and I think I think that the requirements, the time requirements of being a director, have only increased. And I think directors have responded accordingly. And I think it's at least in part for that reason, that they are better able to, they are, they are uh, better able to engage in outreach with, uh, with shareholders, and better to own major decisions. So Ken mentioned before, uh, stay on pay. Um, what we're hearing from our clients is that boards are, are not, send, not, not sending um, members of the IR team, but they're sending members of the compensation committees to own decisions 
mm. and to walk shareholders through the decisions they're making. So I think that I think that gives shareholders a higher degree of confidence in the representatives. It is difficult for investors to know what boards are doing well because we don't have a window in, and so we make judgments in part on disclosures, but also interactions and in, 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 in what we see. I believe, and, and this is coming from someone who um, has mixed views about having say on pay at all companies. I think it had an unexpectedly positive impact on engagement. Um, and that's surprising to me because prior to say on pay, I think our first step would be to hold compensation committee directors accountable. Now they're somewhat insulated from that, and yet uh, companies seem more concerned about the vote on a uh, advisory vote on compensation than the potential negative votes on members of the board. Uh, something I have theories about, um, but but can't explain. But I think engagement is on the rise. Director shareholder engagement. Uh, more and more, we do have a willingness from companies to put forward directors, and directors more and more are running that meeting. They're not, you know, you've, we've had times when you, know, you have five people from management and the director, and it's unclear which is the director and which is management. And, and, and we see that changing. We sometimes have meetings where it's just an independent director, which is, uh, which is very different. Uh, so uh, you know, that, I think, is meaningful. One uh, advice I'd give, because I've heard the comment, you're saying companies still figuring out how to do it, and we've had you know, the quality of those engagements vary. Sometimes they just want to listen, and there's not a lot of interaction. But we've heard some people counsel boards to put forward your camera-ready directors, and I find that a problematic concept. As an investor, if we want to talk about compensation, you want someone, the chair or someone from the compensation committee, uh, who, who has some, maybe not the same level of understanding as the HR person, but from a board perspective can talk to you about compensation. And if you want to talk about governance, you'd want someone from the governance committee. And investors are pretty sophisticated. You know, we accept that someone might not be as smooth a uh, representative of the board, but I think substance is, is what we're looking for. And I also say, you know, we do see an uptick in responsiveness from boards. I think on proxy access, where I don't think boards have embraced it, but they recognize the investor community wants it, uh, and that the sky's not falling, uh, you know, the alarmist nature of, of it. And, and so we, we've seen a dramatic shift in the last year where uh, boards are proactively adopting, and, and it's, that's become much easier. And engagements around issues where if there's a proposal that receives less than majority support, uh, but at reasonable support, investors want to, or boards want to understand that and, and sometimes will be responsive. So I mentioned engagement is something that boards have, have improved at. They can still stand to improve on the, on the communication front. Um, engagement should probably be a bit more proactive rather than reactive. And it should also be consultative. Uh, if boards intend to make big decisions, major amendments to their bylaws, they should go out and vet, this, and vet their planned actions with their shareholders before uh, before pulling the trigger. We've seen companies in the last year that have run in some trouble by, uh, by acting unilaterally and by not seeking shareholder input and were somewhat surprised come, come the time of the annual meeting, uh, shareholders were upset and uh, the result was substantial opposition to, uh, to board members. I think larger companies tend to be better about this, but there's a lot of room for improvement. It's, you know, shareholders have a, have a limited number of rights and their ability to vote is, is one of them and they want to have a view on, on major company decisions. And the board should keep that in mind. Well, I think the issue that trumps all others and that Sean alluded to uh, is board quality and composition. You know, Ken mentioned previously that boards are more independent, and, and I think that's true. And I think the focus from the investor perspective, certainly post-Enron, has been independence and accountability. And I think we still believe that's fundamental. Uh, but it's not sufficient. You have the right board, the right mix of skills, experience, sufficiently diverse. And uh, so I, I think, and it's difficult as a very diversified investor to make those judgments, but looking at the board in totality, and you can have a board where it's possible that these are all highly qualified people capable of adding value in the boardroom, but maybe it's not the right board or no longer the right board for that company. And so uh, this, this ties into diversity uh, with regard to race and gender diversity, but also skills 
industry experience, uh, regulatory experience, whether cybersecurity or climate. Uh, and it also ties into the discussions around board tenure, where uh, I think boards are not doing a good job refreshing themselves. And it's, it's, it's a difficult thing. Directors don't like to tell other directors when it's time to go. We were talking before we started about the PwC survey, where, where you know, many directors, uh, I think it was 40%, uh, in a survey, believe there's at least one director on a board they're on who ought to go. But you know, it's so still a bit clubby. And the relationships in the boardroom are such that directors don't like to tell other directors it's time to go. And we bear the consequences of that as investors. There has long been a gap between uh, boards of directors, at least at blue chip companies, and investors, uh, portfolio managers at least, who t have tended to want to see more industry expertise, a little bit more understanding, uh, and I think have the view often that you need some pretty good knowledge to ask the tough questions. Um, and, and I think that gap is less but still exists in many industries. Uh, and maybe it's less of a gap if, if boards could explain themselves better in terms of how they think about the composition. But from the outside, from an investor's perspective, it's not really clear yet why the boards have the composition that they do. So I would so I'd add that in. The other thing I think, um, I've been told by some directors where, in, and I think a relatively few companies that do individual director evaluation, that that process could be much better. And the feedback, aside from pushing someone off the board, feedback about how to, how to make the group work better could be, be, could be improved at many companies. So, so that's a, a what I hear. I, you know, I don't know to what extent that's true. Um, I would add a couple other things to the list of areas, uh, areas for improvement. One, I'd always put uh, executive succession planning because I think that's just an absolutely key job of the board. I think it's really difficult. And I, I think it's still, there are a lot of challenges to make that as effective as possible. Um, and, I, uh, and we mentioned engagement. Um, there's still more to do in engagement. And in particular, I think if there was a better sense from boards that they understood and knew who their long-term investors were and what they thought, I think boards might react a, a little bit less or in a different way when activists show up at the door. Um, that is, have a little bit more perspective. And activists, I think, often serve a useful role. Uh, sometimes I think that the boards get pushed in a way that some of the larger long-term investors don't always agree with. Uh, and right now, we see boards settle immediately uh, so often. So I think if they know the shareholders better, they're going to react to that better. Um, finally, I think I get a sense that uh, boards and board members generally are a little bit insular um, and, and uh, need to understand their role in the broader public setting, and, and we may, may get to this later, but uh, uh, particularly with sort of a wave of populism out in the public um, that, and I, you know, I hear directors say they're underpaid uh, with, you know, average director pay of $250,000 plus, and that may well be true. But I think f they ne needs to be understanding that most Americans are going to think that's ridiculous. Um, and so I, I don't know that there's enough perspective. I think we have a real gap generally between elites and the broader group. And that's, that's, there, there are threats to companies because of that. Two points I'd want to make. One's a continuation of the discussion around skills and experience. I think you're going to see more investor engagement around the qualities of directors that investors would like to see, uh, potentially engaging to, uh, specific candidates. Mm -hmm. But I think that's one. And that'll allow, uh, I think, better engagement with investors. And I think it'll also help with the activist challenges, as, mm -hmm. as Ken alluded to, about why we have the right board. Uh, and then the other area, which is only loosely related, is I think you're going to see, and we would like to see more, both board oversight of and articulation of strategy around sustainability related issues, climate, human capital. Uh, companies always talk about how th their employees are their greatest asset, but they don't lay out a strategy around human capital. They don't provide metrics that allow us to understand how they're managing that asset. Uh, and I, I do think that's a, a, an area where, where boards could, could improve. I think boards are going to face the question, where is the growth going to come from in the coming years? Um, I think uh, I mean shareholders are certainly looking at they're, they're looking very closely at at strategy. They ex they have higher expectations of directors to be able to comment on company strategy. And 
I, I fully expect that the, uh, there will be more conversations around where companies are going to find growth going forward. And the answer, the answer will likely be different than it was in the trailing 10 or 20 years. The answer will not always be an acquisition. Um, investors are very sophisticated. They're, you know, they tend to, to follow industries very closely and companies very closely. They'll expect boards to be able to comment on what the, what, what the company is doing to deliver sustainable growth for long-term investors. Uh, capital allocation is very important to investors, so I just reinforce that. I th then would also extend it uh, to the executive compensation sphere. I think there's more work to be done, particularly in investor-focused metrics, return metrics, and so on that tie into uh, both the strategy of the company, but but also capital allocation in a, in a tighter way than they have in the past. That's a ge gross generalization, but I think there's more work to be done. Thank you for joining Thank you. us. Thank you. And that will conclude our launch edition of the Investors Board Performance Review. We hope you enjoyed that. We're going to be looking to have um, three of these a year in a way to be and bring in different uh, investors and different sort of genres within those investors to give you a good view of that. So we want to thank you for joining us and we'll look forward to bringing the next show sometime around June. Thanks a lot.